So one of the most interesting questions about self-consciousness is uh, the continuation of you, the self, uh, before and after sleep. Uh, when you are awake, just like I am now, uh, I am continuous and I am sure that I am the same me, uh, you know, as time passes. And so I am the same I as I was, uh, for example, an hour ago, because of this continuity. Uh, stream of consciousness in the sense of uh, William James. So there's no probably no problem there. Uh, there might be some you know um, complications like uh, when you're in the flow, uh, in the sense of Chikusen to um you know you kind of lose some part of your self consciousness because you are so absorbed in what you're doing. But otherwise, uh, you when you are awake, there is this continuum of yourself, uh, self-consciousness. But when you are asleep, uh, you know, you lose your consciousness and you are not there. I mean, it's blank. It's as if you are not existing in this universe anymore. And of course, your brain uh, continues to exist and, you know, there will be your activities in the brain and you might dream and memories will be sorted out, uh, stored and consolidated. So the brain is not resting during sleep, uh, so as many uh, evidences from neuroscience uh, suggest. So, you know, you are there, I mean, unconsciously. Yes, but physical self is there. But as far as consciousness is concerned, and as a subset of uh, consciousness, uh, self-consciousness is concerned, you are not there. You are, do not exist. So when you go to sleep, uh, you lose your consciousness, and when you wake up, you are there. And as you recall, uh, you know, you are the same person, like, as you were before sleep. That's our conviction. Well, that's our assumption. Nobody wonders when you awake, uh, you know, uh, you do not feel that you have been brought into this world, that do knowable, I mean, from nothing. And, you know, you uh, rather feel that, okay, I have been sleeping and I've been losing my consciousness, but I am the same I, um, you know, like, just like uh, I was before sleep. That is our usual assumption. But how can you justify that, uh, you know, from fundamentally, uh, you know, theoretical sense? Uh, because for sometimes our memories are blurred. Uh, for example, if you have too much drink, uh, just like I do, um, very infrequently, you know, only once or twice a year, or much less than that, I think. You know, you, you do not recall what you were doing up to the moment when you fell asleep. So you, you're not sure uh, why you are here. I mean, you, you wake up and sometimes it's quite possible that uh, you find yourself in a totally strange room and you're not sure how you went there and how you went to sleep and you know th that could happen in this case uh, can you be sure that you are the same self as you were before going to sleep you know it's, it's theoretically possible that you were actually created to novel from nothing with all the relevant memories you know, of course, you know, scientifically speaking and technologically speaking, it is, uh, you know, a very small possibility, but it is still theoretically possible that you were born and uh, you are made uh, for, with all the relevant memories and, you know, and presto, hey presto, you, you are there with your self-consciousness and with all the relevant memories, but actually you were made, created uh, a few minutes ago and your, 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 your brain was turned on, and hey, you, you have your self-consciousness with all the relevant memories, but, uh, you know, uh, the, the feeling that you just woke up from sleep, and it, it, somehow that you uh, is continuous with the you before sleep, uh, it's, in this case, an illusion. So, you know, of course, every, every, morning we wake up and we hear that uh, I am the same me as I, uh, the I, that I you know, existed before I went to sleep. So, you know, that, that we take for granted, but uh, from 
fundamentally theoretical point of view. Uh, it is an illusion, isn't it? I mean, you know, you're convinced. I am convinced, but it is, after all, an illusion, like many things uh, in consciousness is. So, you know, so that illusion is always, uh, you know, felt as really robust so that you we take it for granted and, you know, assume uh, it is as if it is a fact that we have a continuum of, of, of the self before and after sleep. But when, you know, as I said, uh, when you had too much uh, drink and uh, somehow your memory is blurred, then uh, this conviction is somehow, um, you know, compromised and you are uh, not sure uh, of this self continuum, or, so to speak, uh, anymore. So, you know, if you put this thing in a more general framework, I, uh, I would say that it's actually a Bayesian inference uh, based on the evidences that you make about the continuum, continuity of uh, self-consciousness before and after sleep, or any break of um, self-consciousness. Uh, for example, if you are under general anesthesia uh, for some operations and you lose consciousness, you wake up and you assume that uh, you are the same you, uh, you know, before as you were, before the operation, before you were put under general anesthesia. So that is uh, actually a Bayesian inference. You know, it is something based on the likelihood of you being the continuous you, uh, you know, before the breakup of the self-consciousness. So this is a really interesting uh, case, uh, at least from my point of view, because um, as I have been arguing, um, you know, statistics has nothing to do with the essence of consciousness. That has been my whole argument, you know, um, because you know, statistics is about ensembles and, you know, people take ensembles and they get uh, some statistical analysis, but that has nothing to do with the here and now of the brain. So statistical analysis uh, by its own very nature uh, has really little relevance to consciousness per se, especially qualia and intentionality and all these things. And self-consciousness at one moment, you know, the phenomenological uh, component of uh, self-consciousness at one moment has nothing to do with, you know, uh, statistical properties of the brain at that moment. Uh, you know, of course, uh, statistical analysis is uh, practical and uh, sometimes useful, to you know, understand the cognitive processes in the brain. I don't deny that, but I do argue that statistical analysis per se cannot, you know, uh, shed a really illuminating light on the nature of consciousness, and that has been my own, uh, you know, strong argument uh, for over the years. But you know, having said that, uh, I do think that the continuity of the self before and sleep, after sleep, which is a daily occurrence, and it is amazing that you know, we take for granted uh, the continuity of the self uh, at this, you know, really uh, frequent daily occurrence of the breakup of self-consciousness. And you know, we take it for granted, but this foundation is actually based on this Bayesian inference. You know, the fact that the likelihood that uh, you are likely to be <laughs> the same self based on the evidences and your own brain state and memory contents and all these things, general knowledge, common knowledge, and, you know, you kind of statistically infer that you are the same self as the you uh, that existed before going to sleep. So now, it is, I find it really interesting that uh, at in the heart of something as fundamental as the continuity of self-consciousness, there is this statistical principle of Bayesian uh, inference. You know, um, it is something that uh, probably casts doubt on the very fundamental nature of the continuity of the self itself. If you take the view that there is only spacious moments, I mean, always we are in the here now. And the only thing that is certain is the fact that I am feeling uh, these things. I am having all these phenomenological choir at one moment. That is the only thing that is certain. Memories can be, you know, 
broken down、uh, phenomenologically. And if you think of the brain,、uh, memory when it is invoked in consciousness as a collection of quality, intentionality, and all these things,、uh, then uh, that is the only thing that is certain about memory. It is not a mapping from the past to the present、uh, in the conventional sense, you know, which is assumed to be the essential nature of memory、uh, by many、um, You know, people,、uh, you know, it's, it's not a mapping from the past to the f- now, and it is just a correction continuum of phenomenological experiences at you know, spacious moments. And if you take the view that is only you know, the spacious self,、uh, spacious self consciousness is the only you know, solid thing、uh, about our own existence, then this whole idea of you. As a continuum of the self from your childhood to your adulthood and beyond, is very uncertain. It is something that is like a castle、uh, built on the sand. I mean, you know,、uh, it's so w o r r y So I think the fact that in order to explain the continuum of the self before and after sleep,、uh, You, in order to do that, you、uh, need this Bayesian influence. It's a testimony of the fact that maybe, maybe the continuum of the self, which is a very foundation of our life,、um, is doubtful. I mean, it is not something that is as solid as、um, the phenomenology of your experience at one particular moment. You are. An uncertain existence when you extend it over time.